Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. In today's tutorial, we are going to make some elegant and sparkly glittered Christmas ornaments. In this video, I'll share with you everything you need to make your own. These are simple and elegant, they're shatterproof, and the glitter is contained, so they're clean, which is a nice thing. We use glitter as our main color palette so you can make beautiful and unique custom color combinations to match the colors of your Christmas tree. First, we'll add our favorite colors of glitter to the inside of craft ornaments. I'll show you several different variations and how to achieve nice mixes, swirls, and ombre effects. We'll use a chalk marker to sketch out some different designs. And then we'll finally paint the design using pearl white paint on the outside for a nice elegant finish. So we'll go over the whole process step by step and I'll give you four different designs to get you started on your own collection. This is gonna be lots of fun, so I'm happy you're here to join me in this holiday ornament sparkle fest. So let's grab our materials and let's get started. So for this project you will need glitter. I like super fine glitter and I used this Arteza set of 54 different colors and we'll go over that a little bit later. I used plastic ornaments. These are the kind that you can get at a craft store. I think I got those at Hobby Lobby. It's the kind that you can take the tops off and add stuff on the inside. These are plastic and shatterproof. I also used this Minwax water-based polycrylic varnish. It's a lot cheaper than Liquitex or any kind of other varnish and uh, I used that little pipette to add it to the inside of the ornament. Then to apply the paint, I used my paint applicator kit that's available at the Dotting Center. It comes with two bottles and 19 different tips. Um, and this is what it looks like when it's capped. And this is the paint that I use. This is Folk Art Multi-Surface White Pearl Paint. And I used that because I wanted something that was going to hold up on that shiny, glossy plastic ornament. Then uh, you're going to want to make a cone and then Play-Doh is optional but awesome if you want to squish your ball on your table. And then you're going to need some plastic cups so your ornaments can sit and dry. Now I love glitter ornaments just like the next girl but I do not love the mess. This is an ornament that I had and you know how it is. You take out your ornaments and there's glitter everywhere. With this new way of making glitter ornaments, you can not only skip the basic colors, but you can keep the glitter contained within the ornament itself. It's easy, it's less messy, and you can make really beautiful ornaments. Now, because I had several different colors that I wanted to do, I needed a lot of glitter. So I reached out to Arteza and they were happy to send me their set of 54 different glitters. And I saw it online and I really wasn't sure what to expect, but when I got it in the mail, it was, it was a shock. Let me tell you, this box is heavy with glitter. These jars are big jars of glitter. This is extra fine glitter in 54 different shades, and they're really unique colors too. They're like, uh, night sky blue and holographic silver, holographic violet. Um, they have glow in the dark, neon colors. I mean, beautiful, beautiful shades. And when you're looking to make ombre balls or um, different patterns of glitter, you want to have collections that are similar in, um, in color so that they mix really well. Oh, hi. I should turn that off. But anyway, the selection here is much better than anything I could get at my local craft store. Plus it comes in this cool box. 
that is its own little storage container, which I really love nice packaging and they did a great job. So here are a couple of different options. This is black to purple to blue. It's got kind of a galaxy look to it. And then this one is just subtle and clean going from silver to white to pink. You can just get some really cool, interesting looking mixes with this glitter. So you're going to want to get some plastic ornaments. I got this box at, I can't remember if it was Hobby Lobby or Michael's, but it was, I got 24 ornaments for like 10 bucks. I had a coupon. And um, so you want to make sure that you get the plastic ornaments that have the tops that pop off, right? So yeah, pop, just like that. So the first step is you want to make sure you mix this up really well and then you take your ornament and what you'll need to do is insert about a teaspoon of the varnish on the inside of your ornament and to do that I used this little pipette. So then what you want to do is swirl the varnish inside the ornament so that you can coat all the, um, the inside of the ball. And this varnish is opaque while it's wet, so you can see where it's covered and where it hasn't. Then what you do is you just drip the excess back into the can and then place your ornament onto in like a plastic cup or somewhere where it can drip dry for about five minutes. Basically what you need to do is make sure all the drips are going to be out of the ornament and the inside is tacky and ready to accept the glitter. Okay, so the first one is ready to go. It's all tacky. It's mostly clear. You can see it changed from being opaque to mostly clear. Now I tried to apply it like this, and while you can, there's an easier and better way to do it, which I will show you next. So to make the glitter insertion much easier, I went ahead and made my own little cone. So you take a piece of paper, you fold it up into a cone shape, and then you tape it so that it stays put. And then you just want to clip off the end so that it's big enough to um, fit the inside of your ornament and then clip the, the bottom edge and the top edge. And there you go. A little glitter cone. So for this first ornament, I decided to do all Snow White. This is one of my favorite colors in the whole set. It's, um, it's white, but it has little bits of pink and green and blue. It's just really, really beautiful. So the technique is you add the glitter and then um, it probably takes two teaspoons, maybe one and a half teaspoons. It doesn't take that much for these. It depends on what size your ornaments are, but you just shake it and um, stir it around and as you swirl the glitter sticks to the sides. And then once you get to the end you just add a little bit extra and at this point you can just shake it up. And just be gentle with it because um, you know sometimes um, you might have it clump or if there are drips that you didn't get, it might um, run down the sides, but you'll get the feel for things. It's pretty easy. And then you tap out the excess, and I always use the excess in a mix because that's always cool. But look at that, Snow White. Isn't that beautiful? And it's all contained inside the ornament, which I love. So good. No messes. All right, so now we're gonna add the glitter. And it's been about five minutes, so this one is ready to go. So you first add your first color. Now this one is gonna go from pink up to white. It's gonna be just a simple uh, gradient going from a light pink, and then you mix the pink and the white together, and then add the white at the top. So your first step is to swirl the first color along the bottom. 
And um, as I was doing this one, I kind of wanted the pink to extend further up the sides. So I decided to add just a little bit more pink and get it halfway up the side of the ball. So here I added probably another teaspoon of pink glitter and then I swirled it around so that it was halfway up the edges of this ball. So once I'm happy with the level that that glitter is at, what you want to do is tap the sides so that all the excess glitter goes down to the bottom of your ball. Because at this point, what you're going to do is mix. Oops. Oh, goodness. Had a small glitter emergency. But anyway, it wasn't that bad. All right, so now you add the second color and a little bit of the first color so that you have pink and white and you're kind of shaking that up where the glitter is already stuck so that it gets a good mix and then you swirl it one more time for another level of color so you see how that is uh, that's an in-between shade of the pink and the white so you get a lighter um, shade of pink and now for that top section, I'm going to add all white so that it looks like it goes from white down to the pink. And yep, so that's the third level of color. And you can do this with any number of different color variations. You can swirl sideways. You can just do all kinds of creative stuff. And here are some examples of the balls that I ended up making and I loved it. It was so much fun. My daughter even helped. She loved to mix different glitter combinations and shake it and she was a good help. So that was a lot of fun. So for our first ornament, I thought I'd show you another variation that you can do with your glitter. You can mix three or four different colors together and kind of have a custom mix and have it just cover the entire inside of the ball. And I think that looks really cool. My daughter did this mix, which I was really proud of her. I think it looks fantastic. Um, and then you come in with a chalk marker and just draw in some flowy spiral shapes. So really the main goal with these first lines is to just make sure everything flows together nicely so that when you turn the ornament it, you know, one shape flows into the next and there's not really a front section and a back section. You know, I wanted it to be something that you could hang on the tree and it would just look cool um, no matter how it was hung. Um, so yeah. And like I said, you can just make little floral elements. Well, I think at this point I was like, okay, this is going to be leafy. So then this shape is going to be leafy. And all the ends are going to have some kind of leaf thing going on. But at this point, I'm just getting the overall design down. So for the decorative elements on all of these balls, I'll be using Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint in Pearl White. And I'll be using these paint applicator bottles with different tips. And that's available at the Dotting Center. So the reason I'm using this multi-surface paint is because these uh, plastic balls are glossy, I need a paint that's able to uh, you know, hold up and stick on this slick surface. So you don't want to use regular uh, acrylic paint that um, could peel and chip and scratch. Uh, if you do, make sure that you use a really solid varnish in the end to lock it in. Uh, but with this folk art paint, I feel really confident that it's going to stay. And I'll run some tests and, you know, I'll let it dry. I know that with plastic too, sometimes things can change over time and plastic can degrade. So I'm not really sure how long this 
finish will last, but I'm hoping that it lasts for a long time. By the way, I know that a lot of you have painted ornaments in the past, and if you have a paint suggestion, um, please list it in the comments below. I know a lot of us would be grateful to hear what's worked for you in the past. So here I decided to use dots, and I'm basically creating one large dot and then separating it with tiny dots and this applicator bottle makes it really easy to change sizes I don't have to grab a different tool um, and so I'm just following those outlines and filling the shapes as needed and I think it was right about here with this one where I was like you know what I'm fussing with that a little too much I think I want to try to use a dotting rod for those big shapes so I made my tiny dots and then I went and grabbed the correct size rod. So here you can see the consistency of that paint when I apply it with a rod. You can see that it has a slight peak. So um, while that's not great for um, rods, it's perfect. The consistency is perfect for applicator bottles because it's a medium bodied acrylic paint and it's gonna hold up um, and have a nice puffy texture when it dries. So I loved this paint. I feel like it really worked well. And um, yeah. So I learned something right here when you're doing a floral pattern and you're going from swoosh to swoosh, kind of down a line, it's easier to start at the top end of the line and apply the swooshes going down this way. That way you can connect them as you go and it just, it makes more sense. It also makes more sense to paint from left to right if you're right-handed because then you won't run into paint on your painting hand as you're holding the ornament. It's a, it's a picky thing, but you know, every little tip helps, right? Okay, so it was at this point where I decided to let that sit for a bit and let it dry before I did any more designing on the other side. So it was right about here where I got kind of carried away with the leafy shapes and uh, this just wasn't looking uh, awesome, it was less than awesome. So it's so easy to start over. I just got my silicone tool, it was a flat chisel head and just wiped off the paint and it's as easy as that. You just go right over your mistake, redo and you're, you're good to go. So that first side went ahead and dried and you can see I thickened up that line a little bit more. I added a couple rows of dots to make it kind of look like a snow flurry. And then I wised up and I got some Play-Doh and I just stuck it down on my work surface and just stuck that ball right on the Play-Doh and it stayed in place. It was actually really uh, helpful. So for the rest of this, I'm gonna use standard dotting tools just so that you can see that you can use both and you can see here it's just a, a little bit more work you have to reload your tool every time um, but hey it still works beautifully so now I'm just gonna follow those lines all the way up those curves and continue the design outward
So now I came to this flower bit right here and I wish that I had used the applicator bottles just because it's such a long shape for those drops. So I went ahead and redid these shapes with the applicator bottles and it was a lot easier. And now for the finishing touches, we're just gonna add some dots along the edges of those drops. And there you go. That's our first ornament. Okay, so here's another design variation and we're using this pink ombre glitter ball. This is one of my favorite examples. And it's gonna be just another variation of a swirl design, and this one's gonna be a little more simple. So here I am, I'm about to start to paint, and I learned from that first ball that you wanna start at the end of your floral element and work your way down. It's a lot easier that way. So for this one, I just wanted to do a very simple spiral um, that looked with just a tiny bit of floral embellishments and what looks to be like a string of pearls. So can we just take a second and admire this glitter job right here? The This Arteza glitter is so fun to work with. I mean, the colors blended magically in this one, and that's why I didn't want to paint too much on it because I feel like you, you need that glitter to show up. It would have been fine just as it was, honestly. I was so happy with how this one turned out. Um, but yeah, of course I'm going to paint over it. That's what I do. So here is an elegant little design. This one incorporates simple leafy branches and little dotted branches that could be like mistletoe or some other kind of holiday uh, floral design. And uh, yep, so you just flip it over. And this time, instead of doing drop shapes, what I did was leaf shapes. So you create a dot and then you pull the tip, the top up and the bottom down with your tip so that it has kind of a, um, a leaf shape. It's kind of amazing how quickly these designs um, are done. You know, I'm used to dotting uh, mandala designs, which can take a very, very long time. But I loved the elegance of having just something really simple on top of that really colorful, sparkly ball. Um, I did some with different colors and I wasn't as happy as when I had just plain pearl white. I think it unifies all the balls, makes them all look like they're all, all part of a collection. And um, it just has a little bit more elegance to the glitter. And I think uh, it works.
So here is this design and you see how quickly that was whipped up and really what you'll do is just let this side dry and then continue this design on the other side to complete the whole thing. So this one is a winner. I want to do one on green and um, see how that looks but yep very easy very simple and I think it looks just awesome. So this design started as a floral design, something that kind of looked like a paisley or lace floral element, and it ended up getting a little feathery uh, as I started to paint it. I wasn't really sure what kind of pattern that I wanted to do, so I just started adding dots and uh, just went with it. So I don't usually draw and paint this freely. Um, the only reason that I felt um, kind of so easy with painting this is because this is, you're painting on a shiny plastic surface with paint that you can wipe off and wash off easily. So really there is nothing lost. If something ends up looking funky, it's so easy just to wipe it clean and start fresh. So I think I was able to get out of my comfort zone and do something a little different, knowing that, you know, not only could I just wipe it off and it wouldn't be a big deal, but, um, you know, I would end up learning more and kind of the, through the challenge, I would end up pushing my skills just a little bit more. And I loved that about this project. So this is another example of a, a dot shape that I can't get with normal silicone tools very easily. Um, the fact that you can push out enough paint in one move and then use the tip as a way to uh, push that paint around the surface, it's a very easy um, two-step process where with regular you know, a stylus tool and a silicone tool. It would take multiple tools, a couple of passes with the paint to get enough paint thickness on there to get it to go um, in the direction that you want it to go and for the length of the line that you want to achieve. That's why um, I love using these uh, bottles because it's just a whole new way to add designs and paint to your projects. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So what do you all think? Isn't this a fun project? I just loved it and I hope you guys loved it. I hope you're having an amazing holiday season. Um, I wanted to just take a second to say how grateful and thankful I am for every one of you. I appreciate all of the, the kind words that I get from everyone on this channel. And um, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. Spend some time with your family, get some art done, make some new ornaments. It's a special time of year and I just wish all the best to all of you. Thanks again for watching and if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because I have way more videos to come. And as always you can meet me at the Dotting Center on Etsy and pick up some new art supplies. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and I will see you next time.
Bye, guys.